Okay, yes, hello and welcome to the live stream. Uh, this is my friend Flo, who uh, is really good at timing. <laughs> Hi! Oh my gosh. All right, well, happy Wednesday to you all. I hope you all are, do are having a wonderful week. We've hit mid-June. Uh, it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit here in New Mexico. Uh, so, you know, indoor life is where it's at. Although, I have been appreciating the evenings. It's been, we've had some really beautiful evenings. Go out. It's, it's, just, it's just pretty. Except for all the smoke in the air because half the state's on fire. So, you know, there's that. But, um, you know, you gotta take the positives we've learned wherever you can get them. <laughs> because if you don't, then, you know, all is dark and miserable. So, yeah. Hello and welcome again. So obviously I wanna know what everybody is working on tonight. Um, we've got on the camera here, Flo's miniatures. She's finished up the, um, the Necron army for the 500 points, right? Yes, yes, the Necron combat patrol is all done. So that's 500 points of sweet, sweet Necrons that hopefully my Imperial Guard has some chance against because I don't have a whole lot of extra dudes, but I do have a Punisher Gatling gun and I'm really, or Gatling cannon, so I'm really hoping that with the, you know, wounding on six thing, we actually get some progress uh, to beat them. So, I don't know, we'll see. All right, let's see what's going on in the chat here. Hi Adeptus, welcome to the chat. Hi Austin, good to see you, man. Revok, oh yeah, I appreciate you making it. All of you guys. Paul, thank you as always. Sorry, Paul. For for being here, being our buddy, being my moderator. I, I, Rev, I can't believe how quickly that two weeks flew by. We were just talking about that. It's like every time we think I'm, I have time to prepare for something, it's just like, oh. <laughs> well, right. yeah, I, I let too much of my schedule take over my life, I think. So, yes. Things are touch and go at work. Might work state statewide soon. Oh, goodness. Hopefully that's not too much driving for you. Hey, Mandragora, welcome. I am too. The day started too quiet and cloudy and cool. <laughs> Working on crafting some roads. Hello, Plunder Den, welcome to the chat. Austin, here in the Pacific Northwest in the mid 60s, I'm working on some Crick's Arknode chickens. Ah, yes, those little, those little bone jacks. Those Necrons look awesome, don't they? Siobhan! Oh, he caught the stream, so I guess I have to read it. <laughs> hey Miranda, I finally caught one of your streams. Did you know that in 1998, the Undertaker threw mankind off hell in a cell onto the Spanish announcer table? And to this day, I really can't remember if I actually ended up seeing that because I kind of watched pro wrestling as a kid. <laughs> yes, tis hot. Ash's Instagram was 121 in Arizona the other day. Yeah. And this is why we don't live there. Yeah, One I don't think them. I could quite do well in Arizona. Arizona's got some things going for it, but it's a little much. Not, not a little much, a little much. Not enough for me. So, I guess let's start with the, well, I guess before I have to change out those things. Uh, you, you recently had a procedure done? Yes, that's why I'm kind of weepy over here, just dabbing my eyes off and it's, on. It's not because I hurt her feelings before the stream. I promise. She's so mean to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, um, I got LASIK done yesterday morning. She had laser surgery. Woo! On her eyes. My I got eyeballs. to see some... With freaking lasers. With freaking lasers. I got to see some footage of it. It's crazy. Because the whole thing is, what, 15 minutes? 10. Maybe. 10 minutes, yeah. Yeah, it takes a while to kind of have you hang out there for a bit to let certain meds kick in before they do it, but... To keep you from struggling. And then yeah. they just put you in this machine and they... You know. Ten minutes later, they're like, okay, you're done, bye. <laughs> Austin lies. You totes hurt Flo's feelings. Congrats on the new peepers. Now everybody can see Flo's pretty, pretty eyes. So, And you got better than 20-20 vision for it. Yeah. Um, so. Apparently, I'm at 15-20 so far, and it's still healing, so it might actually get better. Michael Gray, Flo's got laser vision? Basically, yeah. <laughs> It's what you need to really get the, uh, those faces drawn onto miniatures. You need laser eyes. Uh, Thomas, I posted the Cleric of Mara to your Facebook. I saw that. I actually responded to that one because it happened right before we started. Um, your Cleric is beautiful. Let's 
they flow. But wait, you're an Adeptus Mechanicus now? No, nothing mechanical. It's still all natural. Although they do have those surgeries where they put a fake lens in that's permanently installed, so you can basically you, so you never get cataracts because it's a synthetic lens. That's more ad mech y but, And you would know that was a thing. Like a she, she was modified. I would not say like a space marine. No. No, I think if it was modified like a space marine, I might have more height. Blows eight foot tall. I would be terrified. We couldn't be friends anymore. I have a habit of I have a policy on not having friends taller than me. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute here. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty bad lie. Let's see, Siobhan, I've been burned out on miniature paintings, so I've been painting Gundams instead lately. Yeah, I saw some posts of that on, um, on the Discord, so those are looking good. Rebecca, I bet you didn't watch the Final Destination movie with laser eye surgery scene beforehand, or did you? Uh, is, which one is that one? <laughs> I, I watched all but one, I'm pretty sure. And the, and the last one I did watch was so painful, but I didn't bother watching any after that. Gosh. Oh, apparently later, speaking of horror and hopefully not terrible ones, that, that um, weird phone movie with dead people. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, coming phone, out at the phone. end of this month. What was it called? It's Black oh, Phone. Uh, was it Black Phone? I thought it was Black Phone. Maybe it's Black Maybe Phone. Maybe it's Black Phone. I and mean, when you say it, you're like, that's a terrible title, but I don't know. No, it's, it's Ethan Hawke. It's yeah, Ethan Hawke being a kidnapper. Yeah. You know, like most of Hollywood. So, it's, yeah. It's, in, it's on brand. Great looking Necrons. Yes, so let's take a look at the rest of the Necrons real quick. Okay. So, got, got those dudes. And we're going to just keep sizing up here. So those are the uh, small base, which look like 32 mil base. Do not ask. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot tell. Definitely 32. Those are, yeah. Okay. You'll be able to tell because your Harlequins will have much smaller bases. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. Or we could noticed. compare to my Imperial Guard. That's right. Which, by rights, like I could see Cadians being on 25 mil, but. Frankly, Catachan should probably be on 32 <laughs> and fit all those muscles. <laughs> and there's one more of those that doesn't fit on there. So. Ah, fair enough. So there's actually six of those, but five are would fit. And you know what? They kind of look Ethan Hawke playing Arthur Miller. Appreciate you, Shaban. <laughs> anyway, yes. Um, so there's those dudes. Whose names I can't remember. Canoptic destroyers, was it? Canoptic destroyers? Oh, okay. And then next duders. Well, I guess you can probably. Canoptic. As opposed to Canoptic. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Because they're tech. Techy. Oh, so clever. 40K and they're clever, clever designs. <laughs> and then that's your HQ, right? That is the HQ. So he's whose head I need to blow off whenever we get on the table together. Uh, and you know, for those who've been following the live streams for a while, I, you might be a little bit necroned out because this has been it's taken what, a couple months to get them all painted up. Well, I mean, it wasn't just these either. I, I was given just regular infantry before that I was working on. And then finally a list was made, so I had a, defi a definite Scheme, crew yeah, to work on. Yeah, fair enough. But they're definitely looking good. So Flo's had a lot of, uh, you've got these pictured on your Instagram too, right? Uh, not all of them, but most of them are. All right. And then those dudes, fun times. I like the bases. Yeah, so the bases were, where'd they come from? Do you know? Um, I know some of them have been 3D, 3D printed, but I don't know. I don't, all of I don't them think were. all of them were. Okay. So looking pretty good, beautiful tech army. So when those get thrown on for combat patrol, should make for a really pretty game, right? So love that copper. Yeah, the copper came out so nice. and. You didn't put any washes on these, right? This is all just your normal highlighting, like you've just 
I put a little bit just to darken the very edges of like the um, bases and stuff like that because okay. it's not a black I put in there. It was just a really dark gray. Oh, there you go. But very little. Looking so beautiful. Siobhan, but where are all the scantily clad Necron waifus? Why are there none of those painted? Because yeah, it's not, not my army. Oh. <laughs> That's why, apparently. Because <laughs> it's not your army. <laughs> but it's okay. DJ is in the, um, I think, is he in the Valhalla chat Discord? He should be. He should you can be. give him crap there for it. <laughs> yes. Let's see. Wow. Well done, Flo. They look great. Thank Alex. you. Andragora, speaking of 40k, I am suffering right now. The new codex for, for Chaos Knights has essentially nerfed and destroyed all the Forge World Knights by ability in gaming. They went, they went half my inspiration. Oh, they were half your inspiration? Oh, God, the Imperial Knight Codex just got... That's an, oh, because the Chaos Knights yes. have all come in and just made everything... Well, that's just codex creep, isn't it? I mean, that's pretty... Standard. I could standard fair, right? Um, and I agree with you because what, a month ago, we had the worst, you know, as an Imperial Guard player, we had the worst army in the game because we still don't have a codex at all. <laughs> so it's like, there's just always that churning. And I, it's, it's, it's not an ideal situation, but I don't know that it's ever not been that situation with 40K which I think is partly why most 40K players I know have at least two armies and prop most of them have like three and four armies. Let's see, guess the robots will take over and we'll look like that. Uh, Adeptus Ridiculous says, great looking killer wet blending there. Thank you. Good job. I try, I try. Uh, Imperial Knights just got released a few weeks ago. No, it's keywords. None of the Forge World have the codex keywords. So we can't give any of the codex equipment or use half the rules with them? Are you serious? With who? With Imperial Knights. Oh. No, I'm sorry, with Chaos Knights. Let me see here. Yeah, the new codex for Chaos Knights has essentially nerfed and destroyed all the Forge World Knights. So because of the keyword setup it has for it. Which is really weird. I mean, presumably GW is still friends with Forge World. Why would they exclude them from their entire codex? Or, or was this just an oopsie that's going to get FAQ'd in a month? Huh. It is what it is. Ho-hum. Now you have to buy the Horus Heresy box set now. Yeah, I've been seeing some excitement for that one. Let's see. I literally lost my vows and special equipment that made my $600 2,000-point uh, Porphyrion dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Mandragora. The FAQ already dropped. It didn't save them or edit all the words we needed. Lesson is never try to understand the reasoning behind GW decisions. That way lies madness. I mean, uh, that's true. So, do you have another army that you play normally, Mandragora? Like, would it make, I mean, as painful and miserable as it is, would it make sense to just put the, the knights aside for a while and focus on something else? So it feels like if you touch them, it's just going to remind you of how upset you are. My waifu Imperial Knights just continue to gather dust. You, you, you play a bunch of different one, um, lists, though, Siobhan. So. And if I recall correctly, aren't you still just playing older editions of 40k anyway? I mean, I remember the last Valhalla we were at, people were so uninterested in ninth that I think people were playing like fourth again or something like you know, way back. I'm like, oh, okay. Was well, fourth pretty good? I can't, I, I learned in fifth. That was literally my introduction to it where I was like sweeping advance is a horrible rule and I hate this game. Oh, what's poor machine? This is great. Well, that worked out well for me. Let's see. As the story goes, Forge World may go out of business, and now GF is going to take over all the HH, uh, the Horse Heresy 30K stuff. Really? Do you mean GF or GW? 
because I don't know what GF would be. So instead, <laughs> so now girlfriend is going to take over all the horror heresy. Andrew Gore, so instead, I am currently buying dollar store jet fighters and converting them to be Trader Guard aerospace fighters. Uh, it's just army building, not gaming. I have nobody to play, but it hurts passion. I mean, it sucks. Yeah, he meant GW, so GW would be bringing all the Horus Heresy stuff over, which I thought GW was in charge of Horus Heresy anyway, but... Uh. Hey, I was playing Marvel Crisis Protocol. Oh, okay. Which, as far as I can tell, is just gobbling up the market share of the gaming world right now. I also think that War Machine is the superior game. Rules wide, rules wise, 100% yes. And you know, it's an interesting argument that I've had with you, Tommy, where we've talked about the difference between those two games and how you like the idea of generic leaders that you can have as oh, people yeah. who lead your army so, so that you can build a. People as your but then you have Marvel Crisis Protocol where people are playing named characters and going gangbusters. I think the investment is different. We're getting an echo. Why are we getting an echo? Oh, do you have uh, both mics on? I don't. Just one. Uh, Siobhan says he doesn't hear an echo, so... Paul is the only one hearing an echo. Sorry, darling. I think that's a... That's a Paul, that's a Paul problem. <laughs> Sorry. Problem on your side, darling. <laughs> Sounds like it might be a personal problem. Uh, let's see, mostly because I re-sculpted the bodies of all the female characters. Yes, yes, that's right. I do remember that now. Let's see. GW needs to get off their behinds and start releasing new versions of the old IG units. No variety sucks. What are you talking about? There's these new Imperial Guard models that have been announced. More, more Cadians. Lots and lots of Cadians. Oh, and the Kurskins? Kurskins. Kurskins. No, there's the uh, other ones from um, um, a place the movie's about. Uh, I'm blanking on this, sorry. What movie? Uh, the animated movie, the um, Hell's Reach. Oh. The, um, Is it Armageddon? Yeah, the, the soldiers from Armageddon. Oh. Right there, the World War I gas mask looking guys. Ah. They, they're in the Octarius set. Like, we, you have some of those, in fact. That's those are right. the ones that DJ liked to look up. Yeah, they're pretty cool. But yeah. You have those too. Okay, there's those. But they don't have Catachan. Not that I'm complaining. Like, I kind of like my ugly little Catachan models. Like, I don't know. They're fine. Um, random, because I was thinking about older 40K models, and you remember, you know, you compare orcs today to orcs of the 90s, and they're like night and day different. There is a video game coming out called. Bolt gun, I want to say, something like that, that has models all modeled after the 90s versions of everything they're running around in, and it looks hilarious and fun. Big blocky dudes. Yes. Or squat blocky dudes. Exactly. Hi, red green Wampasaurus. I blame Zoidberg. Zoidberg was the creepiest character in all of Futurama. Disgusting. <laughs> Hated Zoidberg. <laughs> anyway, hi Todd, welcome to the chat. Let's see. Cadians are boring. No, Cadians are fine. It's just there's more to the world than Cadians. So it's like if you if you're playing Cadians, then it's great. Like you just get all the stuff. And and I don't have any issue with Cadians. I just like my ridiculous Rambo men, so. Let's see, in between my Frostgrave campaign, I am painting up an Imperial Japanese force for bolt action, World War II rules. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the uh, bolt action campaign we'll have this year at Valhalla. They always pull out such amazing tables and a cool campaign. It's just uh, guys who run it, man, they do an amazing job. And Warlord is super good about supporting it, so I'm so happy to see bolt action doing well in the market share for that. Uh, yeah, orcs in the long coats and pickle hops. Is that a word? 
Let's see, we're gamer girls. Speaking of retro, did you watch the Maverick movie? It's so good. I just watched it twice. I know. I saw Jurassic Park last night, and I really wish I went and saw Maverick for the second time instead, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, I was going to talk about Maverick a little bit later, actually. Zoidberg is the Bill daughter of Eve of Futurama. I don't know who you're referring to, Mandragora. Ah, so yeah, what are you guys all working on tonight? Uh, Flo obviously has her, um, well, I guess now is finished, the um, Necron army for now. Uh, so that's two 500 point lists that are done, right? Yes. Yay, which would be Tau and then Necron. Oh, King of the Hill. Ah, uh, Bill. Okay, I see who you're saying. See, Pickle Hub is the word for the helmet the Germans wore that had the spike on top. Oh, learned something new. That's cool. Siobhan, too bad I can't make it to Valhalla. I know. Gas prices are not friendly for my friends doing a road trip from Georgia to Utah right now. Yeah, yeah. Gas prices. That's super fun. Who knows, maybe that'll be the thing that finally topples GW. People having to make the choice between driving to work or making their miniature haul. Uh, Todd, basing my dreadnoughts with some dead corn and wheat, I found a Hobby Lobby. Oh, nice. Speaking of which, did you take a look at what I posted on your Facebook lately? Lately? No, I haven't. I have to check that one. I got Cabalite Warriors almost completed. Nice. Working on 25 millimeter Zulu War, war Brits. Uh, no, Zoberg is the Three Stooges. Okay, there you go. Um, so, what are you working on now, Miss Flo? I am working on the English Ivan crew for Malifo. Yeah, do any of you guys in the chat play Malifo? That one is, uh, I mean, it's a, an actual skirmish level game, so small model count, relatively. Um, and third edition seems to be somewhat stable. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but you've got the rules for it. Yes, I do. I've only gotten to play a couple games, though. Yeah. And they were with a new player. <laughs> well, let's show off what the English Ivan models look like. I do. Michael plays. Hey, Michael. Yes, that's right. You're a fan of ye olde Malifo. I might have to bust out my uh, Neverborn crew again. So that one's painted. He's the only one painted right now. So, Michael, I have a Riva Malifo crew half assembled next to me. Nice. Todd, how are you going to do the Shadow Men flow? Can't really, I can really only think paint black and dry brush white for the effect. I'm actually working on them right now, and it's a whole lot of gradient with a whole lot of shades. So, you know, gray, black, a little bit of white. A gradient as in, like, there's a reflection off of them of some sorts? Well, they're, they're shadows. Right. So, like. I, I know, but, <laughs> like, how are you... Rendering that. Carefully. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how I will explain this. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm still figuring it out. This is the first one. Ah. Uh, love the work on Ivan's coat. Very subtle yet striking. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely nice work there on the... I actually haven't even seen him. Malifaux models are always interesting to paint. Like, they seem so easy. Spindly. Well, spindly. <laughs> true scale. And, but also spindly, like they, they very easily blend into any kind of RPG world you could play in. Uh, let's see. Tonight, can confirm the Nemesis video game is super fun. Jimmy loved watching. Okay, so Paul's been in on the Nemesis board game. Um, board game. I'm sorry, video game. Yeah. Uh, Siobhan, I'm currently teaching myself more LED tactics right now. I'm going to make it so that the tanks can plug in to recharge and I won't have to plug in a battery anymore. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Just waiting on some parts. Really miss your battle reports. Oh, I appreciate that, Bill. They're, they're coming. Right now we're working on some brawl machine lists and combat patrol lists. Uh, Mandragora, I am finishing my medieval nuns plus women at arms army. I have painted armor and cloth and I'm finishing horses and the heroines. Once they're done, the army will be done until I buy or make more models. Yeah, yeah. Austin, I love the look of Malifaux, but I couldn't find people who wanted to play it. 
It's got a deck of cards instead of a set of dice, right? Correct. Yes. Which, was, it's kind of an interesting mechanic. I still feel like I have terrible luck in what I pull, which is amazing because a deck is specifically finite and I don't know. But uh, yeah. Let's see, Adeptus, I'd love to play that too, but so many games. I can see, but I am into aliens and cyberpunk RPGs. Nice. Uh, I like the girl with the two whips. Do you remember what her name is? She was... No, I don't. Yeah, I can't remember all their names either. I was say, it, if it was my group, my crew, yeah, I would be into it. <laughs> yeah, can't remember their names. Scott, I got four Malifaux first edition boxes and blisters unopened. Hey, War Budgies, how you doing, man? Just chatting about some Malifaux. Uh, there's some site I get ideas. Yes. Uh, Paul, yeah, I shouldn't apologize. My egocentric rear floods the chat too much. <laughs> Which brand of paint do you prefer? I'm a fan of Vallejo, says David Luff. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> Vallejo agree. generally. Vallejo. Um, I have really liked the monument paints that I've been using. Though. The Pro Acryl? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you know, we're also fans of Jason over at Monument. He's a good guy. And they make all their paints, which is also nice from an accessibility standpoint. Like, you don't have to worry about supply chain issues as much with that one. But yeah, I know the Vallejo has been solid. Yeah. P3 has been pretty solid. They're just kind of a thick paint. They're very, very pigmented, so you can do a lot with those. Um, in fact, they're brown. They're a uh, blood, bloodstone brown. Oh, can't remember the name of the brand anymore. The brown they have has been my replacement base color for all my golds. Um, and then GW, their paints are okay, you know? They're okay. I hate the containers they're in, and so the therefore they are bottom of my list. The containers definitely suck. Mostly I'm a fan of the washes. I don't even use the washes that much anymore. <laughs> Apple Barrel Gang represent, heck yeah, Apple Barrel and Americana and... Folk Art. Folk Art, that's the other one. I'm like, wait, wait, I can help with this one. <laughs> well, you cut your teeth on craft paints just like me. So, I mean... Even before I did miniatures. It's not what you got, it's how you use it for the most part. It's just a lot of the difference in paint quality seems to affect your own ease of use, I think. Yes. Yeah, so you're not relayering a bunch of times or whatever. Uh, the girl with the whips is Eva Evenhand. Thank you, Michael. Let's see, are you referring to the board game Nemesis? Because I have tried it too, and it's all kick a fun. Uh, no, so. Flo got the Nemesis board game and Nemesis, all the expansions. Nemesis, lockdown, everything. A lot, a lot, a lot of Nemesis. Many, many boxes of Nemesis. But the video game for that board game came out today on Steam. So Paul is exploring that. And I might explore that too because I don't know when I'll play this board game. We'll see. But uh, it looks he's, fun. He's putting off playing board games with me. It looks like, no, I just put off playing board games in general. It's this whole it's this whole battle we've been having lately. And I say battle, it's mostly like a discussion of like board games versus other types of games. And for some reason, like sitting down to play a board game makes me feel so antsy. Just like just crawling out like ah, there's something else I could be doing. <laughs> and I don't know why. <laughs> Let's see. Ah uh, yes, there's a new video game of Nemesis released today. Already played it, because that's how Paul do. Let's see, Mandragora. Oh wait, or did you mean you missed me? <laughs> and you missed me when you said hi to everyone. Oh, I guess you're talking to Paul. Uh, Todd, I'm being more impressed with Reaper paints of late. Have you tried any of the Reaper paints? No. Oh, hmm. don't know that one. Those, model, those Malifaux models are so medieval good. Uh, I would say more Victorian. Like, they very much fall into the um, Jack the Ripper era, which is kind of a lot of the style of Malifaux. It's more gothic horror. But they look awesome, right? Anyone like AK Interactive? And see, Mandragora, I was typing. <laughs> uh, Dave Loaf, I used craft paint for terrain. 
which makes sense because terrain is not going to care one way or another. And for the surface area you have to cover, craft paint is craft paint is the way to go. Boot stockings and skin tight latex, uh, and like and like the craft paint. Hmm. I love the AK Interactive matte varnish. Uh, we use, I think, the Krylon stuff for all of that, for both the primer and the um, sealer. Let's see. I like folk art and army painter. Yeah, army painter recently rolled up with some new stuff, right? Let's see, I would say the Malifaux is more weird west. Yeah, although, I mean, the English Ivan looks also very Victorian English style. And then you also have like all of the Japanese influence for, what's your army or your crew? Um, well, that's Kirai, but you're talking about 10 Thunders. Yeah, well, there's 10 Thunders, Kirai, but you're playing a different one, I thought. A different, um, whatever that, the whole faction is called. Wasn't there another one? Kirai's Resurrectionists. Maybe it was, no. You're talking about Yan Lo is, is um, 10 Thunders. Which, which crew is he part of, or which faction is? Explorer Society. Oh, uh, Explorer, I think I was just confusing them. Because the Explorer Society is new since I yes. played. Mandragora, oh, I have sat on this for weeks. I bought my first month sub to Raging Heroes. So now I have technically begun my quest to get a 3D printer, unless I win their story contest. Oh, well, first off, I wish you all the luck on the story contest. I, um, so we'll see what happens there. That'd be cool. But 3D printers, they're not that expensive anymore. Well, the prices come down a lot. They've become more reliable. I think you're in Australia, right? So don't you get stuck paying like double for everything? But that said, the 3D printer is still kind of a worthy investment. Yeah. Flo, love the goth goodness. And yes, Victorian is the new Gotham style. <sighs> Indeed. Ah, so yeah, so that's that, the English Ivan, and then um, you've also got Nemesis. We wanted to chat about that a little bit. I'm going to show those dudes off since Nemesis got brought up already. How, do you have any idea how many miniatures you probably have with the, ex the, the game and the expansion you got? No, not total. These are just the base characters you can play with. So you busted these out in what, a day? Two days. Two days. So here are some painted Nemesis figurines. Original Check them out. board game base characters. Oh, California. Oh, I don't know why I thought San Diego or Tijuana. Oh, okay. Suffering the same heat as you. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I thought that uh, California was actually a little bit lighter in heat lately. But well, when we were in LA, it was chilly. Remember Santa yeah. Monica Pier? I'm like, it's 50 degrees out here. But I, I thought this my is grandma, California. Last time I like, actually talked extensively with my grandmother, she said that it was in the triple digits. Mm. So, I don't know. It changes all the time there. Indeed, indeed. We don't have to talk about how many miniatures we have. It's always an ungodly high number. This is true. Oh, you headed out, David? Thanks for, thanks for hanging out, man. Have a great night. Yeah, that, that whole pile of, of unfinished works uh, is always fairly impressive. Uh, do you know the names of those characters by chance? I like that uh, you they don't, that they don't have names, they have titles. Uh, titles that's yes. right, because one was like the pilot. So the blue one here, this is the captain. Okay. Uh, purple is the scout. Okay. Followed by the red one, which is the soldier. Hmm. Um, we've got the orange, which is the mechanic. Looks cool. Green, which is the pilot. And white, which is the scientist. The scientist. Who's got the new Dungeons and Lasers Queen Alien Dragon today? <laughs> That's interesting. Dungeons and Lasers. Uh, hot damn flow, great paint job on those minis. Thank you. So, yes, that's the nemesis. And so, Paul, 
to put you on the spot since you've actually like just dived into the video game already. Have you completed it or how, how does it play? Is it, is it like when you play um, Talisman and it's just a video game version of a board game or is it like an in-depth video game that plays more like a proper video game? Yeah, I agree. Those models do look pretty, pretty sweet. And the aliens actually for the game look pretty cool. Yeah, so I haven't of... gotten to them yet. I have to clean them up first. Clean them up? They're, are you I'm seeing like, mold lines? Yeah. These all have mold lines. They all still kind of do. They were not in very good places. Oh, really? Yeah. So were these resin when you got them? They weren't on sprues or anything, right? They weren't on sprues. They were already built. They just, they had mold lines on them. That's all. Oh, well, keep them out of mind, I guess. Gotta clean them up a little bit. Didn't realize Malifaux had a new faction, the Explorer Society. Yeah. So I guess Dora the Explorer will be a faction character soon. Given the way Malifaux goes, yeah, I bet there I will mean, be that like probably would be yeah, yeah a dark gothic looking like Dora. That's totally up their alley to do. I would actually kind of do no, that. There was a, a YouTube. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. The, there was a College Humor skit of oh, that's what it was, yeah. the Dora the Explorer movie. But when she's just yeah. older. She's older. Yeah, exactly. Which There's I a... felt like when they did the actual live action Dora the Explorer, which of course we watched because why not. Um, it was kind of in that vein a little bit. <laughs> We're like, huh. I feel like there was some fighting behind the scenes as to what tone to give that movie. And I really wish they leaned more into it because it was hilarious. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, the Nemesis game, both video, video and board game, plays like the new Kill Team Kill Shot. Now, you've actually played the board game, right? Yes. So how, how does it work? Is it cooperative? It is semi-cooperative. So you have to work together in order for like the ship not to explode or for you to get killed by aliens and things like that. However, you each have your own objective that you have to complete in order to win the game and it's secret from each other uh, player. And your objective could actually be to get the player you're with killed. Uh, I see. So do people typically like pair off? I mean, it depends on who you're playing with and how aggressive they're playing and what objective they choose. Mm, very you get two objectives, and at, once the first alien appears, you have to choose which one you're going for. Oh, I see. That's cool. And you just keep track of it with cards, I guess, for all of those objectives. Yeah, you, you get two cards at the beginning, and so you just you discard one of them when the alien appears, so you know which one you're working with. It's either cooperative and saboteur's game, just like the movie Poetically Sweet Justice. Hmm. It's actually quite fun. Hmm, all right. Yeah, we will have to give it a go at some point. And I guess what up to six players or five? Up to five. So there's more player. There's more titles, classes of character than than you would actually play. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, Paul says, Nemesis feels like a Phasma run, or a Phasma, like running around trying not to die, but in Aliens. Oh, yeah. God. That would be scary. Phasmophobia is already scary enough. And they just put out an update with, like, three new ghosts and no new places, more, more equipment. Yeah, no new locations. I feel like I will continue to participate in Phasma with my friends until the ghosts can attack the van, which I feel will it's be coming. inevitable. I think it's going to I think they're going to remove van safety in either one of the difficulty levels or something. And uh, at that point I'll be like I've outgrown this game. Outgrown. <laughs> outgrown it. It's outgrown you. It's outgrown me for sure. <laughs> Andrew Gora, the big thing is I've had so many kickstarters fail on me and not deliver that I'm starting to think instead of investing in businesses I should have invested in a printer and gotten STLs. Um, I mean, it, it's very handy. I mean, that's that's what we're investing in for the most part. Well, you kind of do both because you do back those Kickstarters, and well, I only backed two. I backed a Zombicide in this one. That was it. Yeah, and then so it's all been STLs from there. What was the one loot loot something or other that you subscribed to? Loot Crate. Is it Loot Crate that gives you the 3D files? Um, 
Loot Crate is what we do. That's a monthly subscription. Yeah, Loot, yeah Crate. Loot Crate is a monthly subscription. There was a... Um, for physical. There was another one that was done recently where they were taking donations to actually send to Ukraine, and it had... Originally, it had, like, 1,000 files, and it actually expanded to include up to 2,000 STL files. Good night. And it was, like, $150 to get full in on that. And so that's what, that's what DJ recently got into. Yeah, no, those, there's just so many options now. I mean, it, it's kind of doing a weird thing to the market because it's almost hard to justify paying a lot of money for a miniature, right? I mean, you, we were just in, you know, a game store the other day because unfortunately one of our local game stores is shutting down at the end of the month and it's, I think, our oldest game store that's doing it because they were around since the 90s, possibly earlier. I don't know, when they were Starbase 10? Uh, well, no, no, they weren't Starbase 10, they were War Games West. War Games West, then Starbase? No, never. Oh, okay. No, they just moved into the building that Starbase oh, was Oh, I but, see, I see. Um, they were at War Games West on Central, originally, back in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, but we were looking at the minis there, and you know, you look at one GW model, it's like $40 for one model. Yeah. And it's like $40 can get you 100 STLs, potentially. I mean, it's such a big difference. And honestly, unless you're doing tournaments, who cares? Like, play what you want. It's definitely made the world of miniature games a lot more accessible to people and democratized that process a lot. So hopefully that would... It makes indie games, I think, more accessible to gamers who already have a 3D printer. Yeah. But, it probably has done more of that. I still don't think most normies have 3D printers. I think that's changing. Uh, Austin, I got a 3D, I got a printer for my mini projects and freaking love it. Best investment ever. I mean, we have several. I never use it because I just have to paint everything that gets printed. <laughs> I feel like mini, I feel like 3D printers are about as common as people who do their own like beer brewing, you know, like where they're like, oh, I've got my little converted refrigerator to do that thing. I have a surprising number thing. of friends who do that, so. Yeah. <laughs> I like that's more normal. Like, there's probably more people with those. I don't know, man. I feel like it's, they're, I, I, would, I would bet that they're fairly equivalent. So, we'll see. STL is stuff like Raging Heroes, Garmark, and Artisan Guild. Yeah. Uh, Paul, Ashley said she may reinstall Phasmo. She wants to claim the van over me. <gasps> oh, well, good luck. <laughs> I just both be staring at the van. Just let Paul and Flo go in until one of them dies, and then we just hit the button to leave <laughs> every time. I got Paul's dead. Bye. Flo, quick, go in and take a picture of the body. Because, <laughs> you know, we're all kind of horrible I don't know, these investigators are not like healthy human beings at all. Which is why I fit in, just fine. <laughs> Todd, oh yeah, Loot Crate, does that still exist? Haven't heard about it since 2014. I'm pretty sure Loot yes, Crate still does. exists. But that's not the one that you guys were subscribing to for all the 3D models. No, no Loot Crate's, so you know, I know. Feature, what's the, the War Machine one? Um, Mini Crate. Mini Crate is based on Loot Crate. Yes. Loot Crate's into physical things. Yes, yes, I know. That's what I'm saying. STLs. It was <sighs> Loot something or other. Oh, hey, yes. let me see if I can find it. Okay, thank you. Because I don't know off the top of my head. You're driving me nuts. There's so many GW minis available in STLs. Well, I mean, and you could even get around. I mean, Thingiverse has just free STLs you can even get, too. The guy in the wheelchair. He... He looks like I one do of the like characters. Devros from Doctor Who, the guy who made the Daleks. Mm. Oh, I never thought of that. Apparently, he looks like uh, one of the guys from Alien Resurrection, which. Oh, we were just talking about that the other day. Yeah, it's the Alien Four. Adept is ridiculous. There's a lot of Kickstarter out for grabs. It's hard to nail down, but just get the tangible stuff first, like Hero Quest, Homicide. Anything that has a good company backing it, like AH, CMON, etc. 
Uh, I kept bash my minis with Hero Forge. Artisan Guild made the Birdman archers and fighters that I thought would fit in so well with Circle of Boros. I should have backed that instead of Ninja Division. Ah, man, that sucks. I hate that, that you've gotten so many failed ones. For the most part, I, I always figured Kickstarter had a really low fail rate, but it's not zero, right? And I'm trying to think if there's anything we've gotten that we've not had, that we've backed up. I mean, How long did it take for the uh, Kevin McLeod the, so documentary? So there was the Kevin McLeod documentary. I think we might have backed that in like 2014 or 15 or something. It's like a long, long, long time ago. <laughs> but they did eventually get it out, and we got the DVD, which is a very interesting documentary on Kevin McLeod, who basically scores half of YouTube. Uh, so he was an interesting fellow. I was really glad to watch that finally. Let's see. Paul, I consider myself officially outpriced of GW. I only buy characters now, not games. Looking at Battletech. Ah, good old Battletech. I really should try out that game properly. Like, um, Albuquerque has apparently a pretty strong Battletech meta. Uh, I'm really trying to work out how to scan my terrain and sell them as 3D files. Oh, uh, uh, Meshroom? Meshroom. You might look into a program called Meshroom. It's free, and it involves, and maybe you've already heard of it, but just so you know, like that's the one that we've seen recommended. You take a bunch of bunch of pictures of your trainer, you video it with your, with your phone. You can use video, but you take pictures with your cell phone. Yeah. You hundred of them, and then it figures it out for you. Yeah, so in Meshroom, you, you take your object, and you set it somewhere, and you take a whole crap ton of pictures all over it, right? and then you compile it all into Meshroom, and it turns it into a textured 3D model, complete with the wrap. Is it wrap, the texture mapping? The uh, UVW map. UVW map. So it does all of that. So you may check it out, good sir. Oh, okay, thank you, Scott. Um, I appreciate that. You're amazing. That's it. So the people who put out the Kickstarter that we backed was Soul Good Creations. And it's Soul Good? Soul Good. S O L G O O D. Soul Good. S O L G O O D. Okay. Um, and they also partnered with my mini, mini factory in doing it. And it was actually a bunch of donations by a bunch of different people who do um, 3D models. So it's not just one company for this Kickstarter. It, every a whole bunch of different creators actually donated uh, files for it. Oh, okay. And it's Loot Studios is the name of the... Loot Studios, that was yes, it. not Crate, but Studios. Thank you. Man, that was driving me nuts. All right. Uh, Manjigore, in fact, Artisan Guild made a series of Knolls a few months back. Should have backed that for Knolls instead of Orc Quest, which is now three years past due and admitted they cannot manufacture anymore. Oh, I wonder if like all the COVID stuff just wrecked everybody's uh, ability to manufacture. Well, I know that like Peterson Games is having trouble. It's why they haven't had much Cthulhu Wars put out mm -hmm. well, since then. Of boats off the coast of California had a lot of people getting, having trouble like having their stuff manufactured in China. Yeah, anybody who was getting their stuff manufactured overseas got... Well, Nemesis took a long time to get to boned. us. Yeah. Like almost a full year longer than it was supposed to. <sighs> Let's see. By the way, you've upgraded your stats on Amazon lately. I'm still pondering your Valkyrie as a second buy through you. <sighs> you know, I looked into the Amazon thing a little bit, and I don't know where. I, I guess I just have to go in and, like, update my store or something like that. I haven't messed with it in a while. But don't, don't let me hold you back from making your purchase. But I do need to take a look at that. Uh, Mandragora, it hurts because I really, really wanted to back Anastir, but I am so aware that China production and shipping is so bad that it's destroying existing businesses, so I have to avoid startups as a rule. Yeah, I mean, at least for now. And theoretically, the market correction to that would be to hopefully see more stuff made locally, <laughs> which would be cool, or things converting to you know, sending you cardboard and STL files to print your own stuff. I mean, that even would be a step toward getting people's product faster. I backed Palo Parente's Anastir when they were part of Zombicide Black Plague. And I really wanted to support him, 
since dust, dust's infrastructure collapsed. But again, Kickstarters fail too much right now. I know, and I really liked dust. I was, we actually brought um, my, my minis for dust to the studio this week, this past weekend, I guess. And I was just going over them. I'm like, man, these minis look great. Like, there's just so much moxie and coolness to them, and they're, they're different from, like, bolt action. They're totally unique feeling games. And